and you definitely don't want to use your stimulus money for this purpose. Can you treat coronavirus by injecting disinfectants like bleach or isopropyl alcohol into your body? The short answer is absolutely not. And the long answer, you have got to be kidding me. Bleach and isopropyl alcohol, like many active chemicals, can destroy viruses on surfaces and in the air, but they're also toxic, which means that injecting them into your body or inhaling them is a really, really bad idea. It's a little like setting fire to yourself because you've heard that heat kills germs. So if someone does suggest you start putting toxic chemicals into your body to protect yourself against coronavirus, just say no. And remember, stay safe. What's up everyone, David here with free to be Thank you for joining me for this video. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three things to avoid doing with your stimulus check if you've been fortunate enough to get it. Now, as about a week and a half ago, on the 15th of April, the government actually issued to millions of Americans the payment through direct deposit if they had that information on record for you. And if they didn't, there's actually a website that I'll link down below for you. Um, it's the IRS portal. It's a tool that allows you to basically check on the status of the money that you're supposed to receive if you are eligible to receive a stimulus payment. Now, a lot of us are not eligible, but let's say that you are. First of all, you should definitely be tracking this and making sure that it is deposited into an account because if the alternative happens and they actually mail you a check, it could be months before you see this money. Now, once you do have the money, here are some tips on what not to do, things that you should avoid doing with this money, some mistakes that you wanna avoid making sure you get the most out of the money. I know $1,200 doesn't seem like it's gonna be an impactful amount of money, but if you use it correctly, it could actually help you alleviate some of the financial pressures you might be facing given everything going on with COVID-19. Now, as always, before we get into the video and the content, if you're new to this channel, I cover financial literacy here while I track my progress to financial independence. And hopefully by doing so, I create a blueprint that others can use and basically achieve financial independence in their own lives. So if you're new, go ahead and take a moment and just subscribe down below. It's a free action and really shows your support for the channel. And if you're not new, thanks for joining me again for this video. A couple other housekeeping items before I actually get into this video. I do plan on changing some things up on this channel, as well as trying out a couple new things, such as interviewing a friend of mine who recently decided that he was going to change his job during this crisis. And I'm going to be interviewing him and kind of getting his take on everything that's going on. And the other new thing that I'm going to be trying out relatively soon is going to be uh, basically a YouTube live session where it'll be more of an engaging question and answer type format. You guys can ask questions about my life. If you guys have some tips that you wanna share, feel free to comment on those videos. But I'm gonna be trying to do that probably within the next few weeks. So definitely make sure you turn on those notifications so you don't miss those videos. Now again, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering three mistakes that you should avoid if you have received your stimulus payment and haven't blown it already. And all three of these are pretty important, so make sure you watch this entire video. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the IRS has already gone and direct deposited over 80 million accounts worth of stimulus money. And that is basically, if you make less than $75,000, you'd be eligible for $1,200 per adult and then $500 for each dependent child in your household. Now, if you have received the funds, what are you supposed to be doing with it? Well, let's get right into that. So the first mistake you wanna avoid is using those funds on your mortgage. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, you're right. In normal circumstances, you shouldn't be missing or skipping on mortgage payments. But given everything that's going on and the fact that a lot of mortgage companies, especially if they're federally backed loans, can't foreclose on your house right now, it's okay if you use that money for something else because a lot of those mortgage companies will be willing to work with you to either push out your next payment 180 days or basically just maneuver a little bit where you can push out your due date 30 days, 60 days to give you a little bit of buffer. So don't just go and take the stimulus and pay your mortgage right away. That's actually not a good way to use that money right now, 
given everything that's going on. And again, most mortgage companies, even if they're not federally backed loans, will work with you right now because they understand that the alternative is to go through foreclosure proceedings that cost them a lot of money and take up a lot of time. So if you've been making your payments on time regularly for you know however long you've had your mortgage, they are going to be willing to work with you. So it doesn't make sense for you to take up to $3,200 that you received for this stimulus and go ahead and spend it on the mortgage. That's just not a good way to use these funds right now. Now the next mistake you're going to want to avoid to use this stimulus money is to use it on investments when you don't have cash reserves right now. Now I understand that looking at the market, you might you know, think to yourself that, hey, prices are low, the market is basically in a downward spiral. If I invest this 1200, if I invest this $3,200 right now, the returns are going to be amazing. Six months from now, a year from now, I could you know, triple, quadruple that amount of money. But that should not be the case if you don't have an emergency fund of cash set aside. You should never start investing until you have some emergency cash in place and you have paid off some debts that are high interest, you know, type debts, revolving credit type, you know, situation. And once you've done that, then you can focus on investing. Do not take it and invest it if you don't have cash reserves, you know, set aside. And you want to make sure that you have at least a few months of cash reserves set aside, you know, for a rainy day. Let's say, you know, you end up getting laid off or furloughed or a situation where you can't cover your costs, you know, medical emergency, whatever it may be. You have to have enough of a rainy day fund so you don't have to go into debt, you know, further debt or, you know, uh, rack up some credit card or anything like that. Put some money aside for your cash reserves. Then if you end up having some extra money, you know, a month from now, go ahead and start investing then. And the third mistake you're going to want to avoid doing here is forgetting about your long-term goals. Let's say everything is pretty stable in your life. You have a cash reserve. You're fortunate enough to have your job. You have regular income coming in, but you still qualified for this stimulus payment. It may be really easy for us to think, hey, this is an extra $1,200 I just got. Why don't I go ahead and live it up? Why don't I go ahead and splurge a little bit and have some fun? Maybe I want a new TV. Maybe it's a new laptop I wanted, a camera, whatever it may be. You know, Don't just go and purchase a luxury item with this money. Don't use it in that way because that's a waste. This is a huge opportunity for you to focus on your long-term saving goals. And if you end up with an extra $1,200, $1,700 that you know, came about in this whole mess, through the government, you should use that and focus it on your long-term saving goals. Like I said before, if you have a cash reserve, there's no problem to start investing. If you've already paid down your debts and you have every other bill in control, take this money and invest it. Because again, you will be able to double, triple, quadruple it in you know a short period of time. One, two, three years from now, you'll take that money and basically have grown it exponentially. Whereas if you were to buy the TV, that thing's gonna be obsolete in about a year. If you wanna buy a camera, how often are you gonna be using that right now? We're all stuck in our homes. So think about it that way. Focus on the long-term goals. Don't lose sight of that just because of everything that's going around. You'll be way better off for it in the future. All right, guys, well, those are the three mistakes you're going to want to avoid with the stimulus payment. If you take away nothing else from this video, don't just go spend it all on something that you don't need. Don't live frivolously right now because we are living in uncertain times and you don't know when your income source might dry up and you might actually need to access those funds, especially if right now, you know, everything's kind of in control and it's, you know, business as usual for you, that situation might change. So it's always good to have, you know, more of a cash reserve or invest it for your future. It's not often that the government actually gives us, you know, extra cash to use. So make sure you use it right. Make sure you're smart about what you're doing with it and so that you can get the most out of it. And again, if you're new to this channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought, what your thoughts are with the stimulus package. When you think everything's going to go back to normal, drop a comment and let me know that down below and we'll see you next time.